Good day YouTube, Komma Natya. Today we're going to start looking at the Lister D. According to the numbers, it's a 1957 model, a 1.6 horsepower output. And um, we're going to see how good or bad it is. So if we have a quick look at the vitals. Uh, the engine is loose. But it has no compression. So you seem to have either a stuck valve or maybe a damaged valve. Um, the water tank looks quite good. Fuel tank is a bit rusty and crusty. But for testing purposes, I think we'll be doing fine. Uh, throttle is stuck. Um, prime valve is working. Set screw is working. I just want to see what the needle looks like. Okay, so first thing I notice, we need to wire brush a bit. You can't see any of the stamped in writing on there. Um, I don't think you're going to see much in there. It doesn't look very good. Uh, that guy's job is to run on the serrated side there and um, keep the set screw at the correct setting. It's definitely on the mixer that it's jammed. Oh, there, it's coming loose. Okay, so we'll have to put some oil on there. And, um, oh, of course, if we want to have a quick look at the valves. Um, can't see too much from the top. But at least we'll have an idea if the rockers are moving or if water gathered in here what that looks like okay it doesn't look too bad I'll just give it a spin everything seems to be moving so we most likely have a stuck valve um, drain cock Oh, it's actually moving. I don't know how well it will seal, but I guess we'll find out. Let's have a quick look at the spark plug. Ooh, carbon. I guess what we'll do with this guy is just wire brush it clean and just check the gap. I may have to go and do a quick bit of reading to find out what the expected gap is. And okay, the grease cup uh, is loose. Okay, so we'll have a look at this one as well. Uh, looks like it was filled at some stage or another. Okay, and of course, let's see if there's oil or water in here. Um, when I bought it, it was standing outside, so who knows for how long. It looks like reasonably good oil. Of course, if there's water, it will be underneath. But um, for initial run testing and so on, there is oil in it, and it seems to be reasonably good oil for testing purposes. Okay. Um, I think oh, we can do a quick spark test. So let me just put you on the stand and we'll quickly see if we get any form of spark out of the mapping. So there's no cutoff switch or anything. The fuel setting determines if you can run it or not. Okay. 
side. Okay, let's give it a quick crank. See if I can move you any closer. <coughs> Try and determine if there's spark. the vitals it's definitely not looking good no compression no spark engine is loose timing we'll find out of course when we get it to to start making a spark um, so as a starting point let's get some oil <coughs> on the valves See if we can get it. See if we can get it loose. Just normal 30 weight oil. So typically, when you run these machines, you're supposed to oil this um, every time you run it, and uh, the grease cup at the bottom. It's just to help the bearing. I think it's white metal bearings. I guess we'll find out when we take it apart. Okay, so this can soak. Um, what I'm going to do next is basically clean up the set screw on the mixer. I'll get the grease cup in properly, squeeze a, a couple of turns in there, and um, then we'll have a look at it again. So I'm going to spare you the boring stuff a little bit, and when there's something meaningful to show again, I'll be back. Okay, we're back. <coughs> um, I've had a bit of success with some of the vitals. So after opening the cap on the magneto, I just cleaned the contact, took the points out, just gave them a quick sand with a, a fine sandpaper. And now, if we spin it, Spark. Sorry for the one hand camera, it's not that easy. Okay, we've got spark, and then the other thing is I let it soak with the oil on the valve train, and um, we have a little bit more um, compression, well, from nothing to something, and um, now at least. It gives a little bit of resistance and um, one of the other things I noticed is you're supposed to hold that down when you start it um, to just reach in the fuel mixture a bit and that thing is stuck so I'm just gonna take that apart quickly give it a clean um, I've done a wire wheel on that so now at least we can see where normal and stop should be so typically all the way closed is off and then one full turn should be oh, nearly a full turn around about there should be start and then you lean it out as it starts running but um, i've got some fuel um, i'm going to rig it up uh, because of all the crusty stuff in the tank I'm not planning to run that just yet. Um, I've oiled the throttle and now we have throttle movement and um, the same on the governor at the bottom. It looks like we could there as well. So just give me a moment. I'm just going to clean up um, that prime setting. And um, I think we're going to try and give it a whirl and see if we can get a puff of smoke out of it. Back in a minute. OK, 
Okay, I've got the temporary fuel tank rigged up, but to save a bit of time to figure out if we have enough compression or not, I'm just going to start off by putting a bit of starting fluid in the cylinder, because we know we've got spark now, and um, there may still be issues with the mixer that needs to be cleaned out and so on. So without further ado, let's put a squirt in and um, see if we can get any form of action out of it. I'm leaving the spark tester on just in case there may be a problem with the um, magneto and we can just keep an eye on what's happening. Hopefully it won't jump on the spark on this side. So let's see, we've got a good air mix. if we need to dig deeper or not. Okay. Hold thumbs. Good news. Good news. But I guess the mixer will have to come off because it's obviously not passing fuel through. Um, when I removed the fuel hose here it had quite a spot of water coming out um, so it's not impossible that our fuel channels may have water and since some of it might be casted parts there may be some rust and bits in there as well so give me some time I'm gonna pull off all of these things clean them out as good as possible and um, bring them back and having had a puff, I think we may have a running machine. I think I'll keep that for the next episode. So thanks for watching. And we'll bring it back and see if we can get it to run for a couple of minutes. Okay, on second thought, maybe we shouldn't give up so quickly. Um, when I took the carb off and I drained the float bowl, it made quite a nice splash of water. Um, it's not so easy to see, but in the bottom there's like a light, light color swirl that's water underneath the fuel. So I've cleaned that out, and um, I think we're just going to give it another, another whirl for the fun of it. I haven't got water in the hopper yet, so it will just be a short run, but I believe it might actually continue to run. So let's give it a bash. See how reliable this thing is.
few problems not fully solved yet. Okay, we call it a day on that one. Okay, we're not ready to give up yet. So I've cleaned the carburetor or the mixer because it's not the true carburetor. Um, it was bad. The, it's got like a main, big main jet um, in the bottom with four massive holes in it and they were all good and proper clogged um, with a white oxidation. So I think the water played a role in driving. So now, I think we give it one more go, and I still don't have water in the hopper, so if it starts and it runs, I'm going to kill it quite quickly to avoid any heat damage. But we'll first give it a good, a good turn and see if it wants to go. guy going in the side there. Okay, at least we know the passages are open now. And it's getting fuel right through to the side where it's needed. That's not cool. Also too much because you never know what side is going to strip first. The leaking. I'm going to solve the leak and then we'll try again. Okay, all the leaks are sorted out. It's time to find out will it run and will it stay running? And the new camera angle just for the fun of it. Okay, so that is closed. That is half a turn out. Let's see. 
that was a good run. So I would say the lister is done. We'll still do a few things on the fuel tank and so on. But it's ready to join that little guy that's running. So we line up the working ones. And then we need to choose which one is next. I think maybe the Peter. Maybe the Bernard Mouture. That guy needs a big end bearing. That's not going to be so easy. We still need to find parts for that one. The Crossley is completely locked. So I've started spraying some oil and things in here. But um, it's also missing bits. So that's not going to be an easy one. And then, of course, the little Wolseley. Uh, so I'll see. For the next round, post some comments. Let me know which one you want to see run first. And um, we'll be back. Comrade Nat signing off.